This is where your grandfather's training would have kicked in. And what they recognised is that this is not only a very important position, but their guns are incredibly important assets because those guns can provide so much support that they can actually save many more lives. So your grandfather would have felt duty-bound to stay with his gun. He would have been fought also as an infantryman. He would have been here with a rifle, perhaps with a revolver, organising his men in all the shouts and the screams and the bomb blasts, not knowing where the enemy are because they've come right behind us. Mm. From this flank, from that flank and behind. And your grandfather lost two colleagues, perhaps two friends, from his battery during that fight. I always said to myself, I wouldn't get emotional about something like this, but... It's difficult to know he was here, you know? So it winds me up, I can't talk to him about it, because I feel now, I feel closer to my granddad now than I have done since he died, you know? Mm. You know, he's been here. I just want to talk to him about it, and it's so frustrating that you can't. Well, what has happened immediately after that night raid, everyone needs to reorganise themselves again. They're under a huge amount of pressure to start the offensive at a particular time and on a particular date. And your grandfather and his division were going to attack towards the, the capital city over those uh, green fields and, and, that, and that ridge. And he was in the front line of that attack right, right the way through to the end. By the 5th of May, Norman and the Allies had reclaimed the mountains near Mejez, and after fierce fighting, Tunis finally fell on the 7th of May, with the capture of 230,000 enemy soldiers. Norman had survived his first major battle. Do you think at the time he think, job done, bit of a victory there for everywhere, for Britain and the Allies? Back home for a cup of tea and see my new wife. I think, sadly, he knew that because he'd signed up for the duration, the job wasn't done. I feel proud of my granddad. Well, he's been blooded here and he's going to need every ounce of experience and strength he's got left for what's to come. He must have been absolutely petrified every single time he was sitting behind that gun, knowing that every pilot was out to get you. From selling apples and bananas to shooting down aircraft from the sky. I got quite emotional, but um, this is where I'm like my granddad. Sniff it back. Don't share emotion. Having won the campaign in North Africa, the Allies now took the battle to mainland Europe and to Italy, where Norman was sent next. The Germans held the north, so the Allies made a bold plan to land behind enemy lines in Anzio, with the aim of capturing Rome. Paul is following in his grandfather's footsteps and is on his way to Anzio. I've had a bit of time while sitting on the plane to actually read through the letters that my granddad sent to my nan during the time in Africa. There doesn't seem to be any letters covering Italy, so I don't know where they went, whether he sent any at all or not, but you can see these very touching moments in letters where he's trying to put down on paper how much he misses her. I love you more than air before. You're all the world to me. I'm even now desiring your lovely face to see. I mean, he's writing, he's writing the poems now. It's so sweet. Oh, this is funny. This is the first communication that my granddad sent to my mum. Christmas greetings from Africa to my darling daughter, Jill. Best love, daddy. Kiss, kiss, kiss. That's fantastic. Did he draw that? He must have done. My granddad's a bit of an artist, to be honest, and this is the first thing he's drawn, a little card to her, to my darling daughter, Jill. The baby was only three months, but that's something for my mum to keep. He wasn't going to be home for years. 
It's so sad. Ladies and gentlemen, we are beginning our descent towards Roma Fiumicino Airport. Should you please come back to your seats and fasten your seatbelts? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've been coming in Italy for, for years now. I also feel very comfortable coming here. Knowing that my grandmother was here for at least two years makes it even more poignant that when I come back, I do feel quite comfortable. I think it's a great place, fantastic people. And the food is fantastic. Of course, the bread, well, some superb bread here. Is meeting military historian Richard Doherty. Hello, Richard. Hello, Paul. How are you? Lovely to meet you. Likewise. Meet you. Likewise. In a great looking place as well. Indeed, isn't it? Right. Can you fill me in on some of the things which I wanted to know about my granddad? I knew he was in Anzio, but I don't know how long he was here. I don't know what they were doing here. Can you fill in those little gaps for me? Well, the uh, Anzio campaign actually began on the 22nd of January 1944. Your grandfather would have sailed up here from Naples. He'd sailed about two days before that. Uh, come into Peter Beach, which is around the headland from us here, uh, in a fleet of hundreds upon hundreds of ships. And one of them is the ship in which your grandfather is coming in or attempting to come into Peter Beach, and that's the landing ship tank HMS Boxer. Was that the actually one he was on? This is the very one he was on. How did the Germans react? I mean, was the was the lines of guns all the way across the top? This actually took the Germans completely by surprise. 36,000 soldiers and over 3,000 vehicles made it onto the beach at Anzio. But as the day went on, the weather worsened, making it harder to land. Most of those who were coming ashore got ashore, but not your grandfather. You're kidding me. There were problems on HMS Boxer. She had to withdraw, uh, moves out to sea, and has to wait until the next night before Boxer can actually come in and offload your grandfather's battery. And that's done not on Peter Beach as planned, but on X-ray Beach around the corner, closer into Anzio Port itself. I really need to see this beach where he landed. That's where my granddad was. I need to walk the same place. Yeah. So here we are, the map of the beachhead. He should have come in on Peter Beach, moves around to come into X-ray Beach, where we are now, and the Germans have reacted, and they have reacted pretty furiously. And what they're doing on this night is reacting by air attacks. So you've got German bombers coming over and hitting the area around Anzio, hitting Peter Beach, hitting X-ray Beach, and it's a ferocious attack because the Germans by this stage are actually using uh, and it's not for the first time, they're using guided missiles from aircraft. They're using ordinary bombs, they're dropping mines. They damage one ship, HMS Janus, so badly that it sinks with about half of its crew lost. The destroyer Jarvis is also badly damaged, and the mine destroys an American landing ship tank, which goes down with over 300 men. So my granddad, was he a bit of a sitting duck out there? He was very much a sitting duck. He's witnessing ships being sunk, ships being damaged. He's certainly seen devastation and death all around him. It's one of those uh, hairs on the back of your neck moments, which I got it when I was in Majez, and I'm getting it here now. You, you have that huge sense of, you know, my granddad was here. When you look around, you see some of the old buildings, you know my granddad would have been looking at certain things, which I'm looking at now. It's such a beautiful, peaceful place now, but 72 years ago, it certainly wasn't. Bless him.